go getters of Biotechnica, welcome back again to another video. So today I'll be talking about one of the prestigious fellowship that you can re-entry back again to India. The fellowship is Ramalinga Swami Re-entry Fellowship. So through this fellowship, you are going to get a grant of rupees 10 lakhs plus rupees 1 lakh per month remunerations. So let's talk about all this detail. So this is Caroline Green from Biotechnica. So let's talk about all the things in detail. The first thing about the fellowship, what is this Ramlinga Swami re-entry fellowship all aims about or what's the purpose going to be? So what is going to be the aim or the purpose of this fellowship? We already know people used to do PhD. After that, they pursue their postdoc abroad. So after the postdoc, they used to come back to India. During that period of time, they, need, they used to look for some fellowship. So one among the fellowship I would suggest is Ramlinga a Swami re-entry fellowship. So what is going to be the aim? How are they going to support those people? So it is going to be very specifically for high good brains of the world. We can say it's for all the Indian nationals very specifically, who are keenly working overseas abroad in any of the fields. It can be of life sciences or biotechnology or bioengineering or even in medicines or healthcare or agriculture or veterinary sciences and all other allied areas. They can literally come back to India and work in a research projects. So this is going to be the aim or the purpose of this fellowship. Okay, the next thing is going to be the eligibility criteria. Yes, who can really apply for this fellowship? So let's talk about what is going to be the eligibility criteria. So the eligibility criteria is going to be PhD holders can apply and very specifically PhD plus postdoctoral fellows can actually apply for this fellowship. So check out all the eligibility criteria. If any of these things going to satisfy, then definitely you can go for this Ramalinga Swami re-entry fellowship in India. So the first, as we already know, it can be PhD or as I already told you, it can be a healthcare sector or medicine. So MD or any of the equivalent degree with an outstanding track record, which means they need to have a very good reflection in the publication. They need to have a very good publication. And then they need to have at least a three years of postdoctoral research experience overseas abroad. And during that period, suppose if they are doing PhD in India, Let's take it as an example. The last two years has to be in any of the laboratories in any part of the world overseas. Or you can be doing your postdoc abroad for three years. So whichever is possible, you need to have your PhD and your postdoc for three years. The last two years should be definitely in any part of the overseas. Then this is one of the criteria. Then you can literally go for this fellowship. The second criteria, yes, of course, scientists can also apply for this one. So scientists who works in an Indian laboratory, either of any of these fields like engineering or healthcare or agriculture or veterinary sciences or even bioenergy, and all the allied areas can apply for this one. So two things. And the most important thing, yes, this is very specifically for all the Indian nationals. So definitely you can go for this one. The next question might be coming into our mind. Sometimes if you have done your postdoc and you might be returned back to India, but you, you would not be ended up in any kind of job. So if that's the case, can I apply for this fellowship? If you're going to ask me, I would say yes. You can apply even if you're not having any kind of job. But suppose if you have a permanent position after returning from any part of the world after your postdoctoral positions, if you have a permanent job, then you can nev never able to apply for this fellowship. That's what it is. So permanent position in India within this period when your application is going to be processed then you are not eligible so if you're not without a job after your postdoctoral position in India then definitely you can take up this one so these are some of the eligibility criteria that you can actually go up for this scholarship what's the next one incentives yes so this fellowship when you're gonna get it's equal to that of an assistant professor in a college or associate professor in a college or university so this is going to give you a lot of privileges and apart from that it is also going to be equal to that of a scientist B level position so which is actually going to be a prestigious fellowship and the next one is definitely going to be after getting this fellowship, you can actually be involved in teaching or you can also be a supervisor for your uh, postdoctoral positions or for your PhD students or for your master's students, very specifically for PhD and MS students, you can become the supervisor, which means after your postdoctoral positions from 
abroad this can actually fetch you a lot of opportunity so those who are watching out this video for an opportunity after your postdoc then you can definitely take up this fellowship the next one what is going to be the attractive fellowship yes you might have received a lot of good stipendship abroad or overseas so what is going to be the attractive fellowship that they are going to provide you it is almost for one month you'll be getting one lakh and they are going to provide you house rent for almost rupees 18500 for one month and definitely there's going to be a research consistency grant contingency grant is definitely going to be rupees 10 lakh for one year so they are going to provide you a contingency grant to uh, for your domestic travels or for purchasing your materials or hiring a manpower all these things they're going to provide but this is for a year and then definitely an institutional overhead of rupees 50,000 for one year will also be provided so I would suggest this is definitely going to be a wonderful scholarship after your or fellowship after your postdoctoral position returning from any part of the world okay where do I have to take up this fellowship now the question comes where do I have to go and join which host institute do I have to select yes they give you an open choice so you can definitely go for an open choice you can take up this fellowship in any Indian universities you can take up in any Indian universities or any of the scientific institutes any any things this was actually from the department of biotechnology announcing this fellowship so you can take up in DBT CSIR ICMR wherever it is you can take up and any of the industries also you can go for you can go for any pharmaceutical industries and there also you can actually take up this fellowship the next question arises is how much is the tenor of this fellowship the tenor of this fellowship they are definitely going to provide you for almost five years which is really a good thing for five years for per month if you're going to get one lakh along with all the contingency grant and all the house rent allowances so to be very specific house rent allowances as i already told you if suppose the host institution is definitely going to provide you a house uh, accommodations for you then definitely they will not be providing you a house allowance to add up to the point so now the tenor is definitely going to be five years now can it be extensible after a period of time yes you can extend if the project goes a bit far so it is actually extendable for almost two years so five plus two years we can say approximately seven years so unable to secure permanent position will not be considered for the second term suppose if you're not able to get a permanent position then you cannot be able to apply for the second term so this is one of the important point that has to be taken into consideration now the question how do I have to apply for this one yes all of you know it's going to be an online one dbt one those who have applied for projects through dbt would be knowing it yes so the online mode only you can apply and the website is dbt rls online portal so this is going to be the link and what are the information that you would be requiring uh, at the time of your application process so you have to fill up your personal details your academic qualification as I already told you you have your postdoctoral experience abroad so you have to fill up your postdoctoral experience your work experience and how what is the research contribution contribution that you have given and all the referee details this is the most important thing I would suggest because when you're applying online uh, you you have to mention the referee names and what is the designation over there along with the email ID so after that this will be sending back to them through an email so the referees used to get a link of submitting their recommendation letters so for them for the referees there would be a username and the password and they will be logging in they will be submitting the recommendation letter so when you are using this referee details make sure you mention it perfectly the next one is going to be a proposed research work and a proposed host institution where you really wanted to start up this fellowship and where you really uh, what type of projects you want to carry out that also has to be included during your application time okay so the next one is definitely going to be what is the documents what are the documents that you will be requiring at the time of application so this has to be taken so the first is date of birth proof definitely a date of birth it can be any of these things the next one copy of passport if you have definitely after your postdoc you will be having it so you have to submit that and doctoral degree certificate your PhD or MD or MS if you have done your MD or MS then you can do that and it's not more than three to five page which is the details of research contribution you might have done many contribution but make sure it is within three to five pages and you need to have a five best research publication with a good citation and indexes so you can definitely go for this one the next is definitely a research proposal pertaining to or details of all the research works 
not more than three to five pages. Of course, you're going to submit it. And the certificate from the host institution where you're going to join over there, you need to get a certificate from them. And definitely this letter of recommendation will be given by the referees, the name and the email ID that you are actually mentioning in the application. So they would be submitting your, the refer recommendation letter through their portal or through your portal usually through a user id along with the password given to them so these are the documents that you would be requiring at the time of application so if i have to talk about ramalinga swami re-entry fellowship so those who are uh, abroad and trying to plan to come to india but you're finding no jobs or nothing else or no other fellowships available for you then i would suggest that this video is definitely for you so watch out the video completely and you will get a lot of information so if you find any more questions about this fellowship, then you can definitely put your questions in the comment section and we will definitely revert back to you. So the next question might be, can I apply for any other grant if I'm going to get this grant? Yes, you can apply for this. So awardees are also eligible to apply for any of the other research grant. But the most important condition is the co-PI has to be a permanent employee of the host institute. Definitely the co-PI has to be a permanent resident or he might be a permanent employee. Then you can definitely apply for any other research grant. Now you might be having a question. Yes, of course you have joined in a host institute, but can I change a host institute? Yes, the host institute you can actually change, but only once during the tenor of the fellowship. But you have to get a no objection certificate from the host institute where exactly you are, and then you can change it to the next one. So now we have come to the conclusion. So I believe that this video is helpful for you. So someone, if you are looking for uh, some fellowship after your postdoctoral position, then I would suggest this Ramalinga Swami re-entry fellowship is definitely going to be beneficial for those who are watching out this video. So check out the video completely so that you get all the information. Suppose if you find any more questions about this fellowship, then you can definitely put your questions in the comment section and we are going to answer your question. Thank you all of you for joining and I'm going to meet you back again with yet another wonderful video. Thank you.